Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm an intensive care specialist at Flinders. And one of the things that I realized over the last few years of being an intensive care specialist, and often when there are issues and when there are problems uh, and when we look at uh, what happened, there's always an element of miscommunication that occurs. Uh, and what we realized is that if we don't systematically take each of these issues and work through them when we are not stressed, these errors occur again and again and again. In intensive care, uh, in my unit, we have got 32 beds and three separate pods, and there are uh, 40 to 50 nurses. There are a whole lot of doctors. And we walk in in the morning, and we think that we know everybody in the team. Within 10 minutes, there might be somebody having a cardiac arrest in my unit, and I don't know my team. I don't know who they are. I don't know their experience levels. Uh, and often we have to handle a very stressful situation without even knowing who we are dealing with. So we started a simple process where in the morning, the entire team would meet in the middle. We would identify ourselves. We would talk about what are the major problems that happened overnight, who is there, who is not there, including the physios and everybody. And then there would be a, a, a general plan of what the day would be. So this. Uh, helped us to understand who we were working with. The other major times when errors occur is when you're put into a high stress environment and everybody is speaking and everybody is trying to help the situation and there is no clear uh, guidelines as to how we will go about doing it. Like take for example, uh, I'm intubating a patient and it's a very difficult intubation and I've completely lost sight of the fact that the saturation is falling and everybody is speaking in the room, and a young resident is saying, the SATs are 18. I just don't hear it. And I lose situational awareness. But if we decided that from the time we have decided to intubate to the time the intubation is over, everybody will keep quiet, and only certain people will speak in that, in, during that period. Straight away, uh, we found that situational awareness improved. And so, uh, Communication doesn't just happen. It's not that there are good communicators that suddenly evolve. It has to be systematically done to bring in a, a, a level of communication that we would require. Now, the uh, confession that I have to make is that I am also part of the clinical advisory for EPAS. And uh, what, uh, what we, and I, I, I have used EPAS. I've been a part of the team that uses EPAS, and I've closely watched uh, people using EPAS. One of the things that I've learned is if you have a team that communicates poorly, EPAS is not going to make it better. In fact, often people will say, oh, uh, when EPAS comes, this problem will be solved. It doesn't get solved. The complexity actually increases and the uh, level of dysfunction actually increases. Now, every health record comes with a promise that things are going to get better. But for every promise, there is also a pitfall. And what I want to, uh, to begin to go through with you is some of the issues where I think every promise holds a pitfall. Like what I've seen is as human strengths, there are strengths that we have, but if you turn it over, that actually can become our biggest weakness. Like let me give you an example. If we are very pedantic and very, very careful before we make a decision, that's a really good trait. But when we are called like an intensive care to make a quick decision, we find it extremely daunting and difficult to make a decision. The very strength that we have becomes our weakness. And it's exactly the same thing with, in, uh, with electronic health records. And I want to show you some of these things. So everybody says that once uh, an electronic health record comes in, everybody will have access to clinical information. We can access it in multiple places by the patient's bedside, uh, in the nurse's station, up in our office, or even at home. Actually, what I've realized is this actually decreases communication. Because you can write a, uh, an order sitting in my room, a, a drug order, you don't end up talking to a nurse. While if I have to go to the bedside, as I'm writing up my paracetamol, I just tell the nursing staff that, I've, do you know what, I've just written up the paracetamol order and uh, it's one gram or, or, or it's 500 grams for this particular reason that the patient has got, uh, got liver dysfunction. That disappears once you start communicating from various parts of the hospital. 
The second thing is most often people say, oh, once EPAS or electronic health records come in, all these notifications and alerts are going to protect us. Oh, that's fantastic. I agree that there are notifications, but often, uh, like in one of the cases that we are going to review, where it was clear that the GCS was dropping, it had registered because somebody had written that down, but they just didn't act on that. It's exactly the same thing with an electronic health record. You can have a notification that comes up and you can bypass the, the notification. Or you can have a hundred alerts come up. And we have, uh, 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 like we were asked to review a case where uh, a patient in the intensive care had been given a large dose of a particular drug. And uh, what we were told is there were no alerts that came up in, in EPAS. When we went back into the system, three alerts had come up and all three times it had been acknowledged by the person and that person didn't even realize that he was acknowledging the alerts. They had gone past all the alerts. So alerts don't necessarily protect you from, uh, 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 from failure. The other big promise that uh, uh, EHRs bring is that all the, uh, all the clinical information is in one system. You have documents, you have labs, you have radiology, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, old uh, letters and from other hospitals. What I've realized is when you have a large electronic system with a whole lot of documents, it's like uh, in, our, uh, in our computers, you have a whole series of files. So we decide to organize them. So we put them into folders in the computer. Then we have too many folders. So then we put folders into folders. And, and then suddenly, uh, when we don't even know where the file is, yeah, because it's in folders and then folders and then folders and then folders. And that's what exactly can happen with a large electronic health system. Just because the data is there within the system, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's immediately accessible. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so to, uh, we can actually create silos within an electronic health record. And, I, and I'm beginning to see that. The other thing is that just because data is there in a system doesn't necessarily mean that we will pick it up straight away or, or people can actually see it. Like take for example in intensive care. For us, we live around blood gases and lactates. For me, that's really important. But if, if a lactate popped up and, uh, and it said four, a surgeon would wonder, hmm, is that good or bad? Uh, you know, which way should I go? Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense to him unless there is a normal reference range. But for me, I don't need a normal reference range because I see it every day. So it's how data is presented, how graphs are presented. And it, a small change in a graph, you may think there's not much that has happened. But a lactate rise of one is big deal for us. Uh, and, uh, and so how data is presented is really important. Often people talk about electronic health record improving legibility. I believe that just because you have legible records doesn't necessarily mean that it is readable. It is, it is something that we can synthesize. What I have realized is they, it can completely overload you. The amount of information that's there can overload you. And the way that happens is in the chart, when I go around in Flinders, I only record things that I have to write because it's a big process to sit and write down 50 lines. I'll only write five or six lines. But in an electronic health record, by just adding a tick, you can bring in the entire pathology. Another tick, and you can bring in all the radiology. And then at the end of it, you can write your plan and your assessment. Somebody has to scroll through four different pages to reach your plan just because you had the ability to just put in a, a tick and bring in all this information. So actually, the readability decreases <coughs> when you have electronic health records. Inaccurate information. I was uh, told of a case where somebody cut and pasted uh, from, a, uh, from a Word document the wrong patient's details, a patient who had cancer, into a patient who didn't have cancer. Cut and paste is a big, big problem that we need to be careful about when we are using uh, uh, health, uh, electronic health systems. Second thing is checklists and, and workflows. They look wonderful. You know, you have all these things, check, 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 check. But checklists can actually uh, prevent people from functioning adequately. And, it, and you really need to come up with, uh, with checklists that work for you. Sometimes the systems that you have are better than the checklist uh, systems that, you, uh, that, you, uh, that the electronic health system may come up with. 
So how can we maximize promise while minimizing the pitfalls of using an electronic health record? The first thing that I want to consistently say is that electronic health records do not take away the thing of communicating well. Documentation and communication are two different things. You need to tell nursing staff, I've done this, or nursing staff need to say, we've done uh, certain things. When there is uncertainty, the electronic health record doesn't particularly help you. You need to communicate to each other. And when you introduce an electronic health record, you need to increase your verbal communication. And then quickly going through things about uh, decreasing your vigilance just because you have an electronic health record. I think there's a lot of software that is built in with rules and with lots of exceptions to the rules, you, and which we don't, uh, uh, which is not obvious in the front end of the system. And, uh, and be careful, just because you can do a task in 10 different ways in an electronic health record doesn't necessarily mean that's the best way to do it. Thank you.